What's the most ridiculous thing you've seen in court? So, I was the intern for a judge. Most of his cases were related to substances, DUI, or working girls. One day, a woman is brought up from jail for a hearing, substance-related. She's a regular in the courtroom and is in one of the substance dependency programs. The judge asked, Tell me what happened. Well, I was leaving the methadone clinic and this guy asked if I wanted some fire-ass dope. He asked what? If I wanted some fire-ass dope. A lawyer whispers to her. Some fire-ass dope, asked the judge. Yes, your honor, some fire-ass dope. From here, it turned into something very comparable to the Super Troopers' littering and moment, while we all tried to avoid laughing. Skipping ahead, I take it you used it and that's why you're here. I did and it was damn good. I was installing furniture and equipment in a courthouse office. I'm walking into the building with all of my tools, waiting in line to be cleared by security. The man in front of me steps up to the metal detectors and grabs one of the baskets you use to empty your pockets. Into said basket, the man places his watch, his necklace, wallet, keys, cell phone, bag of green herb, and a gat. He then casually walks through the metal detector and looks back to the officer to get his belongings. The three officers and several people standing around are stunned. After a few seconds, the officer with the basket says, Uh, put your hands behind your back? The guy didn't fight them, he just refused to believe he had done anything wrong. He was there for a substance-related offense. I was locked up in a county jail for probation violation. They let inmates out at midnight on their release date and they have to check out at the window by the holding cell I was in at the time to get their belongings. So an inmate walks up to the window to acquire his street clothes and gets the okay to go into the bathroom and change into them. Naturally comes back to the window to sign his paperwork and be on his way. Nope, he digs into his pocket and a joint falls onto the ground. A deputy was called in, patted him down and put him in handcuffs and took him away. These are the same deputies who missed my car keys in my pocket when patting me down a day prior. I could only imagine how that guy must have felt. I'm a legal secretary. I used to assist attorneys who practice juvenile dependency. We were funded by the county to defend indigent parents whose children were removed by CPS. A mother came to court with a tattoo, Frick the CPS, on her neck. A client, the defendant's father, was on the witness stand being questioned. The attorney asked, how much green herb do you use currently? And the client replied, Well, not as much as I'd like. Cue facepalm. Well, you could very loosely interpret that answer as still being none, but yeah, it's not a very helpful statement. Apparently cases involving CPS are a hotbed for strange behavior, as a few more experienced people have written in. It's never a dull moment. I had a co-worker whose client declared to a judge that she didn't see an issue with her husband driving drunk with the kids, because when he was sober, his driving was terrifying, but when drunk, his driving was better than her own. To which the judge ordered her to take a UA, and last I heard, she was positive for a whole lot of substances ending in etamine. I have a friend that does volunteer work that lets her sit in on a lot of CPS-related court cases. She said the best one was when a birth mother, who got her daughter taken away due to her being a smack addict, argued that she was a better fit than the woman hoping to adopt the girl because I breastfed her for 18 months and I read an article that says kids bond with their mother when they're breastfed. During my court reporting internship, I met a really nice bailiff. Sometimes attorneys have to approach the judge for a sidebar conversation that's supposed to be unheard by the jury. But because court is boring, attorneys having secret whisper arguments with a judge seems fascinating to a jury. This bailiff would distract them by playing Marvin Gaye on his phone and dancing around like a Motown backup singer. The guy loved his job and went above and beyond his duties. In a case where someone was robbed by two guys, the judge asked the victim if those two guys were in the courtroom. Before the victim could answer, those morons lifted their hands, as in, Hey, we're here! An undressed man taking off with a city bus, getting charged for Grand Theft Auto. As GTA requires some element of intent to profit, this was transparently ridiculous and got taken off the charge. Florida man? After her third DUI, my elderly and disabled neighbor was being let off with a suspended license and a hefty fine. Thinking she could do better, she attempted to negotiate, loudly and aggressively, with the judge, using her infinite wisdom of prime television law shows. She walked out with jail time. Most of my clients are mentally ill. I do mostly civil and criminal mental health-related work. 
In my jurisdiction, an application by a civilly but involuntarily detained person for a review of their detention must be heard within two weeks of the application, no matter what. So I'm often in the position of managing clients who are unwell, including experiencing psychotic episodes, among other things. Direct examinations can be very interesting. My most memorable board review involved my client giving an impromptu demonstration of how they came to be arrested under the Mental Health Act. There was feces involved. Just another day at the office. Sounds like a crappy job. Sorry, I had to say it. But God bless you for providing legal representation to those who need it most. A defense attorney was tased and tackled by federal marshals after the acquittal of his client. He had been insufferable for the entire trial and threw a fit when the marshals tried to bring his client into custody. Although his client had been acquitted in that trial, he was awaiting trial for a separate crime in another state. Thus, he was supposed to be taken into custody and transferred. His attorney shouted at the judge and tried to block the marshals from accessing his client and ended up getting tased in the process. His conduct during the trial had been outrageous, so much so that the chief judge sought to block the guy from federal practice in the state. He had prohocked in and pursued sanctions in his home state. I saw a woman who wanted to plead guilty and not guilty. When asked by the judge, she explained that she did turn left in front of the other car and failed to yield, but she didn't mean to hit anyone, so she was guilty and not guilty. In the matter of the state versus the woman on the plead guilty and not guilty, we the jury find the defendant no. Schrodinger's mom. I was there to contest a $250 ticket, which was issued in error when the cop ticketed everyone in one lot for parking illegally on private property. Mine was the only car actually allowed to be there. So the guy who went up before me had been ticketed for parking illegally in front of a handicap-only meter, which has a red top in DC. He had brought pictures to show that there were no signs near where he had parked to indicate that red top meters are exclusively for handicap use. He lived in Maryland, he said, and was not aware of that DC law. Since there were no signs, he argued that he couldn't have known. From what the judge was saying, it seemed like he was about to excuse the ticket, when the guy, I can only guess thinking that this would somehow help him, threw in that he was in the Maryland Police Department, and as such, he was a very upstanding citizen who would never break the law knowingly. The judge immediately ordered him to pay the full ticket amount and advised that since he was a DC cop, he should probably make sure to familiarize himself with the laws he was supposed to enforce. I wonder if anyone's ever accidentally discharged a weapon in a civilian space and then tried to get off the charges by saying, It's okay, I'm in the army and it was a mistake this time. Same energy. A friend of mine works for the state's crime lab, mostly working kits to prove the unspeakable act and DNA tests, and she's frequently called as an expert witness to many unspeakable acts trials in her jurisdiction. Once, she said she was called to be a witness for an aggravated case and had to explain how and where they found evidence on the victim. She starts explaining that they found traces of his DNA inside the victim and the correct term for a part of the female anatomy. And the middle-aged male judge stops her mid-sentence and goes, now, wait a minute, you said that word. What is that part? And she had to explain in excruciating detail to a full court and jury what that part was because the judge had never heard of one of those before. Yikes. I work with judges and I'd bet he was trying to discreetly tell her to explain it to the jury. Since they have jurors from all walks of life with varying levels of education, Judges, at least the ones I work with, go out of their way to kindly dumb it down for jurors who might be too embarrassed or timid to ask for an explanation, but need one to understand the witness. Self-depreciation is a good way to do that. To add to this, this exact same question would be the next one out of any experienced lawyer's mouth as well. Never underestimate the jury's ability to misunderstand testimony. Somebody in that box would have heard Volvo and thought the splooge was found in the girl's car. Lawyer here. Female client shows up for court to be sentenced to probation on a minor charge, green herb or shoplifting, I can't remember, wearing what looks like a one-piece, bright yellow bathing suit with flip-flops and a yellow fishnet wrap over the bathing suit. I held my breath when the case was called. The judge did the sentencing and then, and next time don't show up for court looking like you're going to the beach. The client, deadpan as a confused, said, but I am going to the beach. Did he then say, No, we said you're appearing before the bench. 
Nothing too terribly crazy. There was the lady who fake fainted during a hearing when the attorneys were at a sidebar. Like she held onto the chair as she got on her knees and threw herself on the ground like a two-year-old having a tantrum. The judge and attorneys glanced over her way and continued speaking. Then there was the time I told my client we would lose about 110 billion times, but she still insisted on going to trial. And shocker, we lost. So when I took the group around the corner to tell them the news, she started sobbing and slid down the wall all dramatic, while her new guy threatened to beat up the other party. At a restraining order hearing, some guy decided it would be a good idea to threaten to kill his wife in the hallway. My client heard about it and told me. I told the bailiff and left. Apparently the bailiff told the judge. The guy was immediately handcuffed and thrown in a holding cell, and I was called back to court about it. Apparently he didn't really mean to threaten to kill her. All that bravado went away real quick once steel cuffs hit his wrist. The first appearance in criminal court, the bailiff missed the wooden block while using the gavel and shattered the glass covering the tabletop. We had to stop the hearings and used file folders to sweep up all of these chunks of glass before a defendant cut themselves or smuggled some glass into the jail. That bailiff was teased about breaking the glass for years. And another story I heard but didn't witness, a criminal hearing. The victim's father jumps across the barrier to attack the defendant. Bailiff jumps in and the judge can't see what's happening so he pulls out his personal piece. All attention immediately goes toward the bench with the judge standing there packing heat. I believe bailiffs took the judge's gat and got control over the father and defendant. Unsurprisingly, someone ran against the judge in the next election and won. Most other people just say ridiculous things rather than doing ridiculous things. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. We represent what has to be a billionaire and his companies. He's like mid-80s. We had a settlement conference and the guy exclaimed to the judge that he was too freaking old and too freaking rich to put up with this bullcrap. The judge threatens to throw the partner, I'm a low-level associate, into jail. The amount of money this guy pays us, my partner isn't backing down and basically doubles up what the client said. People calm down, the partner tells every new associate that story within an hour. Said partner once also crapped his pants on the way to a hearing once after having eaten four protein bars for breakfast. He was also very proud of his subsequent commando court appearance. I watched a guy sitting in court fall asleep, start snoring, and then suddenly burst out this lion's roar yell. The judge calls him up and asked if he was on anything. No, your honor, just tired from working overnight. It was 3 p.m. His probation officer decided to do a pee in a cup test. Being the only male in the courtroom, I was elected the one to take him to the courtroom and witness him pee in a cup. He tested positive for two to three things. He was sanctioned five nights in jail for lying to the judge and had to restart the program from the beginning. He was pretty close to being on the last step. Another time on revocation docket, we were sitting waiting on the jail defendants to be brought up. We were filling out some continuous motions and we hear this loud hiss and exhale. The lone guy in the galley had decided to take the biggest hit off his vape, right there in court. The judge was furious and ordered him up to the bench. He started crying, stating it went off in his hand. The vape cloud was the full length of the 15-foot bench. He went to jail for contempt. We're not sure what he was there for in the first place, though. Covering a trial for a local radio station, man was being tried for murder. The victim had faked his own death two years earlier and had been hiding in the woods since so essentially killed a person already thought to be dead. Highlight of the trial was when the Commonwealth attorney asked the defendant how the victim ended up being stabbed. The defendant said, He was drunk and fell on my knife. The attorney asked, How drunk do you have to be to fall on a knife 17 times? Was this the inspiration for the cell block tango in the musical Chicago? Or had the guy been listening to show tunes on the way to court and got unknowingly inspired? I was a witness for the prosecution in a case where the defense attorney was probably doing his first jury trial. He kept doing crazy TV lawyer stuff. Multiple times when he asked me a question, he yelled, Are you aware you're under oath? He did the same thing when my wife testified. They had to clear the courtroom at least four times for the judge to yell at him. The guy actually did it, but his lawyer was so incompetent he just didn't have a chance. I talked to him years later. He was getting an outside lawyer to appeal the conviction. It was a court-martial, so good luck with that. Not a lawyer. 
My grandma threatened while inside the courtroom to sue her lawyer for misrepresentation. Then she stormed out after not getting the result she wanted. She's a bit kooky. I was a juror. There was a horrible expert witness testifying for the defense on a murder trial. Everything he said was objected to and sustained. The prosecutor started to question him, and he couldn't answer a single question. He must have somehow triggered Siri on his phone, and it said, It's okay if you don't understand. Expert witnesses have such a low bar to be considered experts, it's almost criminal. My dad is doing a bunch of expert witness and case review for the College of Physicians. He accredits hospitals around the world and he's won numerous awards. He is the top of his field. He was an expert witness against a woman suing another doctor, and that woman's expert witness was someone who had not practiced medicine in three years after no one in the hospital would work with the expert because they were dangerously incompetent. The expert was also working as a full-time real estate agent since leaving the hospital three years before the case. Back when I first started, I was in court with my father-in-law, also an attorney, and he was arguing with the judge and took issue with something the judge had said, by saying, That sounds like something a Yale man would say. The judge asked, How did you know I went to Yale? I saw your ring when you were picking your nose. Yeah, it's good to practice with a bunch of old country lawyers. Just today, I got in a heated argument in court with opposing counsel, and we both had pretty raised voices and her client started to cry. So the opposing counsel said, No, it's okay, this is just how we argue, we still love each other, and came over and gave me a hug. The judge didn't say a word. Another time I was arguing that a guy should not get probation because he was refusing to take random substance screenings. He explained that he wasn't refusing, he just thought we were wasting our efforts because he'd just admit he smoked green herb all the time. Then there was the criminal defendant who came to court wearing a hoodie that said, I came to F crap up. And the lady who pulled into the courthouse parking lot beside the sheriff's department, in front of the canine officer who was standing with his dog in the next parking space, with a veritable pharmacopoeia in her car. The amount of people I've seen show up to court in pajamas and other ridiculous outfits is astounding. I had a friend who worked in family court during law school and she reported a guy showing up to a child support hearing wearing a shirt with dollar signs and money all over it, claiming he couldn't afford anything. Similarly, my client wore a fur coat to a garnishment hearing. She didn't have money, but she did have ratty old fur. I was an intern working for an attorney. Family law. Annoyingly nasty divorce, leaving the courtroom, opposing party leaves first and we hold back a bit before leaving. Standard operating procedure. We go down the stairs and around the corner towards the exit and what do you know, it's the disgruntled former husband with a barrage of colorful insults and he's cranked the volume knob to about 12 out of 10. Enter me, about 6 foot, 175 pounds, clearly working for an attorney and in notably better shape than him. Confident he wouldn't try anything as there are cops everywhere and one approaching to investigate the disturbance. I feel emboldened and step between my client and the opposing party and begin to say, Hey, calm down now, man. Now is not the time or mother fricker punched me in the gut. I was not expecting that crap. I doubled over immediately. He got tackled by the nearest officer, cuffed and dragged away presumably to the jail next door. The partner is clearly trying to contain her laughter and our client is on one knee asking if I'm okay. Meanwhile, I'm dying of embarrassment and trying not to vomit up my breakfast. Heard this from a co-worker who was sometimes in the courtroom. I can't remember what the original offense was to bring the defendant to court, but the guy was really immature and a complete butthole. Wait for it. If there was a moment where the judge wasn't looking, he'd turn to his family in the gallery and smirk at them, just being a complete pain and belligerent all through the trial. Flipped off the judge at one point. The judge said something he didn't like, so he turned around, dropped trow in the middle of the trial, and spread his butt cheeks apart. The judge got a full view of this guy's butthole and ball bag. He and his family all had the audacity to gasp and heckle when contempt of court got added to the docket. I love the idea of a court going full-blown sitcom audience, boos, cheers, and laughs. Let's get it all in there and make a real-life Judge Judy courtroom. I'm a family law attorney, so I see a lot of people at their worst, but one case was absolutely disgusting. I originally started out taking some pro bono cases, where the courts specifically linked attorneys up with people with disabilities who could not afford attorneys. Generally, these people were very nice, and I enjoyed working with them to get them the help they needed. But this woman, she was one complete piece of garbage. I didn't generally get much information prior to meeting with these clients, and so I went into most initial meetings blind. 
When I walked into the room, I was initially confused because the woman didn't look like she applied to the program. She had the Michael Kors purse, an Apple watch, and a Burberry trench coat. Keep in mind that one of the major factors for getting my help was intransigence. I got some information after the case that she continually used a significantly minor disability to get free legal aid to, in essence, harass her ex-husband. We began talking and she told me about how her ex was mistreating her children. I listened to her story and it actually made a lot of sense. Her son, who was nearly 18, actually left her ex's home to come live with her, and her daughter had made a 911 call, which I read the transcript of. So I looked at the file and was a little confused to see that this woman had lost all visitation rights to both her kids. This was a big deal because it almost never happens. Even substance adult parents generally get supervised visitation. She had nothing. When I asked what happened, she told me that the judge was corrupt. I knew the judge well, so I told her that I didn't believe that was the case. She then proceeded to regale me with information about how the judge was in a secret lesbian relationship with her ex's now wife. Once that was out, it was all she ever talked about. She had pieces written online about it, and she actively told me time after time that she could prove it. She talked about it more than she talked about her kids. Fast forward a couple of weeks before the hearing, and I get a stack of printed text messages from the opposing attorney with hundreds, if not thousands of texts between her and the daughter she was to have absolutely no contact with by court order. The texts went from bad to worse. The daughter was 8th grade or so, and it was clear that the mum was manipulating the daughter to skip school and have secret rendezvous where the mother would buy her expensive clothing. So that was definitely a major strike against her, and was most likely enough to deny any requests she was seeking. But there was so much more, including racial slurs, bigoted generalities, and constant coaching to leave her ex's care. The worst, though, was a text chain where the daughter actually called her stepmum a rug muncher which clearly indicated her mum had been feeding her the secret lesbian relationship ideals. The daughter had said that the dad was drunk and the mum replied something vague about how the stepmum wasn't getting any that night with her dad being drunk. The daughter asked what she meant and the mum to her 8th grade daughter replied, Broke wiener. We lost well before the hearing happened. At the hearing, the judge, different from the one the mum hated, did what every reasonable judge would do and denied the request. At which point, the mother stood up and started yelling in front of a full courtroom that everyone there was in on the lesbo bonanza. She was held in contempt and ordered to pay a fee for every day the other child wasn't returned to the father's care. She said that she didn't give a flying frick and she would just pay the fee. At this point, the judge said, Well, if that's the case, I will annotate the file to inform court admin that you should be able to pay for your own attorney going forward. I lost the hearing, but damn, did that loss feel good. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.